Hello everyone, this is uh, Pastor Jeff Short, and this is the television program Christian Answers. And today we're going to be tackling a topic that uh, I recently have had to grapple with, and I'm sure every American has to grapple with, the elections coming up in November. And I ran across an article by a Christian blogger uh, entitled... I am a pro-life Christian, here's why I'm voting for Hillary Clinton, by Rachel Held Evans. And she is a Christian blogger, and she is uh, widely read. And I thought how inconsistent it is that she is writing an article encouraging Christians to vote for pro-abortion Hillary Clinton, among other things. Not just pro-abortion, but she... Hillary Clinton is pro-gay marriage. Uh, she is, in many ways, anti-Christian. And so I found it curious that here is a so-called Christian, so-called evangelical Christian, Rachel Held Evans, uh, writing an article on why Christians should vote for Hillary Clinton. Now, before I go into it, you have to realize Rachel Held Evans is not strictly an evangelical she is a liberal Christian, and that is, she is a person who does not hold to the full authority of the scripture. And so she is able to justify her beliefs based on her spin of the Bible. In other words, she is able to go to a text and not let the text read itself, not let the text interpret and teach itself, but she is she is willing to take a text and basically spin it as if a political candidate were to spin an event in the news. She is able to do that with the Bible and then um, believe whatever she wants to believe. So that's what you have to do to be a pro-choice or pro-abortion person. You have to suspend biblical interpretation and basically uh, take over the teaching of the Bible, override it, if you will. Well, let's go into the article about uh, why this uh, so-called evangelical Christian, Rachel Held Evans, is pro-life, although she's voting for Hillary Clinton. Let's see some of her reasoning, and let's uh, break it down and see if it holds true and if it doesn't hold true. She says, first of all, I am pro-life. Or put another way, as a Christian, I believe the sacred personhood of an individual begins before birth and continues throughout life. And I believe that sacred personhood is worth protecting, whether it's tucked inside a womb, waiting on death row, fleeing Syria in search of a home, or playing beneath the shadow of an American drone. So what she's trying to say here is she's pro-life, but... Um, she also is against the death penalty. She wants to try to make an argument. She doesn't want to try to make an argument against the death penalty from the Bible. She just wants to say she is against the death penalty, waiting on death row. That means she's against the death penalty. Uh, fleeing Syria in search of a home, that must mean that she's uh, for... Um, immigrant, uh, migrant, uh, displaced people, which is quite a category difference from a baby in a womb being murdered, but she's trying to say that's the same, or playing beneath the shadow of an American drone, so she's against Americans uh, using drones. And really, it's quite a stretch to, to take a position of pro-life Christianity and then say, well, it's it's that way with everything and even the death penalty and all these other political, questionable political uh, positions, and that's what I mean by pro-life. Well, that's really confusing the categories of what it means to be pro-life because pro-life is a very specific thing. It means that you want to protect the baby in the womb from murder just as you want to protect the baby that was just born uh, from murder, or just as you want to protect the uh, toddler from murder, or just as you want to protect 
any human life from murder. But to confuse that category and, and equate that with a drone strike, uh, we're talking about war in that instance. We're talking about armed conflict in that instance. Is she against all war? Um, it must be that she's against all war because uh, in warfare people die. And, uh, but that's not the same as murder because there is in the Bible a justifiable killing. Now, Hillary Clinton is against, uh, she is pro-abortion. She believes that uh, children uh, in the womb should be able to be murdered by their mother if that mother does not want to bring that uh, child to, t to full term. Uh, so let's go on. I've also voted for both pro-life and pro-choice candidates for political office. Uh, that's very inconsistent. So she's showing us basically how inconsistent one can be in voting for political candidates. Here you have the statement that she's voted for a pro-life candidate and then she's voted for a pro-choice candidate. Well, that means that she voted at one point for candidates that uh, were in favor of taking human life in the womb, and then she voted for uh, candidates who were against taking human life in the womb. And so um, there's a gross inconsistency here, but she seems to feel that that's okay, and she goes on later and explains why. It says, so I speak as someone who has struggled with, and in some cases regretted, her decisions at the ballot box and who recognize that no single political party boasts a consistent pro-life ethic. No, that's, that's not exactly true. Uh, the Republican Party, for all of its faults, for all of its problems, has voted, has uh, maintained a consistent pro-life platform. And, and that doesn't mean that all of the Republican candidates and Republican uh, leaders have always been 100% pro-life, but the party itself, she said, no single party boasts of a consistent pro-life ethic. Well, yes, they have. The Republican Party has voted and has uh, maintained a consistent pro-life platform for as long as I can remember, decades and decades. Um, but I guess if you include uh, everything from dropping drone strikes, on uh, innocent children accidentally or uh, not taking in uh, immigrant refugees, I guess if that makes you uh, uh, anti-life, then she's expanding the definition of pro-life to include all of these other political things. And then you can come up with this idea that no single party boasts a consistent pro-life ethic. Because if you narrow it down to the real abortion issue, and uh, the human life in the womb, the Republican Party has stood fairly strongly for that. And the Democrat Party has fairly strongly stood against that. So uh, against any restrictions of, of, of pro-life ethic. So there, there, it isn't as blurry as she's making it. It's very, very clear. If you want to vote for a party that is pro-life, you will tend to vote for Republican. If you want to vote for a party that is pro-death of the baby in the womb, you will vote for a Democrat. She goes on, just as no single political party embodies the teachings of Jesus or values of his kingdom, that is true. No political party does uh, perfectly embody the teachings of Jesus. I speak to as someone acutely aware of the inconsistencies and uncertainties in my own pro-life convictions. Ah, okay, that is, that is an honest statement because she is grossly inconsistent and she is very, very contradictory. So she even says that, which continues to be challenged and changed in the midst of lived experiences. Uh, which is one of the problems that she ha encounters. She's letting the lived experience of her life in today's 21st century secular world, she's letting that determine her moral values rather than um, the Bible. And the Bible is not inconsistent. The Bible is very consistent. 
And so she needs to turn to the Bible and not turn to the life experience that she's going through to formulate her moral standards. Okay, so it, she goes on, she says, in the eight years since we've had a pro-choice president, the abortion rate in the U.S. has dropped to its lowest since 1973. Now, the question is, what does that mean, uh, the abortion rate in the U.S. has dropped to its lowest since 1973? Does that mean the surgical abortion rate? Or does that take into consideration the chemical abortions that are being performed now? Uh, there used to be a big issue among the pro-lifers, which I include myself, pro-life movement, uh, over uh, RU-483. And that was an abortion drug. And they, uh, there was a battle because this drug will allow a woman to basically uh, take a pill and that pill aborts the fetus, aborts the baby in the womb. So is, now that pill is widely available. She can uh, obtain it almost anywhere. And it's very popular. So is this... Uh, Rachel Held El Elvin's talking about surgical abortion or chemical abortion or both because if you add up the surgical and the chemical uh, I would very much doubt whether the abortion rate in the US has dropped uh, it's actually probably gone up uh, with the availability of this new abortion drug that's been around for a while but only uh, in the last few years has been widely available. So that is a misconception, that is a deceiving statistic that the abortion rate in the U.S. has dropped. It's probably not dropped because uh, you have to consider, you have to define how you mean abortion now. If she's talking about surgical abortion, that is probably true. If she's talking about chemical and surgical abortion, it's probably not true. She goes on, I believe the best way to keep this trend going is to not simply make it harder for women to terminate unwanted pregnancies, but to create a culture with a fewer unwanted pregnancies to begin with. Well, that's a good, good goal, to create a culture where there are fewer pregnancies to begin with. But um, uh, that's probably not going to be a realistic uh, situation in a secular uh, pagan society where you have people who don't follow the Christian uh, worldview ethic and the biblical teaching on respect for human life. So then you have to have a law that says, okay, if you become pregnant, you cannot kill your child. You cannot murder your baby in the womb. That's why we need the law, because people don't uh, do the right thing. Now, it says, she goes on, data suggests progressive social policies that make health care and child care more affordable make contraception more accessible, alleviate poverty, and support a living wage, do the most to create such a culture. While countries where abortion is simply illegal, see no change in the abortion rate. Again, depends on what you call abortion. Uh, if you're not counting the chemical abortions through the pill, uh, abortion pill, then you can talk all you want about how abortions are going down and this and that. But Unless you face the reality, abortion is abortion, whether it's surgical or chemical, and then you have nothing to talk about as far as the dropping abortion rate. You don't see that, in fact. And so um, her idea that we need to promote progressive social policies and that's how we do this is not a solution at all. She goes on, by focusing exclusively on the legal components of abortion while simultaneously opposing those family-friendly social policies, the Republican Party has managed to hold pro-life voters hostage with the promise of outlawing abortion, which has yet to happen under any Republican administration since Roe v. Wade. Well, she didn't add the fact since the Democrat uh, leadership has totally... 100% opposed every effort to reverse Roe v. Wade. They've opposed every Supreme Court nomination that was pro-life. They've opposed every single um, type of congressional action to limit abortion. So 
it's not fair to say, well, you Republicans haven't uh, eliminated Roe v. Wade or overturned Roe v. Wade. She has to also say that Democrats have been working tirelessly to make sure that Roe v. Wade is an overturn. And she's going to vote for that party candidate that opposes any uh, restrictions on abortions or opposes any effort to reverse Roe v. Wade. That's a contradiction. But that's what she already said. She says she's inconsistent and contradictory of her own views while actively working against the very policies that would lead to a significant reduction in unwanted pregnancies. Again, unwanted pregnancies, um, does that include um, the chemical abortion issue, which she doesn't seem to even acknowledge is a reality, but it is a very much, uh, very much a reality. So even though I think abortion is morally wrong in most cases, why? Why would she think that? Um, if if you're voting for a person, Hillary Clinton or any Democrat nomination, that doesn't have a problem with women walking into an abortion clinic and uh, killing their child, why would you say it's morally wrong? And then vote for that person. Uh, she says, and support more legal restrictions around uh, restrict uh, restrict more legal restrictions around it. Um, that's what the, the Republicans have been trying to do in most states, and yet the Democrats have fought them every way. And you're going to vote for the party that's fought for against these restrictions? Again, the inconsistency here is so alarming. I mean, how can you write so inconsistently and think so inconsistently and then encourage other people to join you in inconsistently thinking and voting. It's, it's incredible that anyone would have enough gall to actually go and, and address these issues and then say, well, I'm, I'm so inconsistent, and, and then go right marching ahead and trying to lead others into that. It's amazing. She says, I often vote pro for pro-choice candidates when I think their policies will do the most to address the health and economic concerns that drive women to get abortions in the first place. That doesn't make sense. Um, women are not driven to abortion to kill the baby in the womb because uh, they actually can't afford to raise the child. Um, they could have the child and put it up for adoption. They could have the child and then the government would help pay for the living expenses for the mother and child through its social policies and so there are so many inconsistencies with these statements for me it's not just about being pro-birth it's about being pro-life all children deserve to live in a home and in a culture that welcomes them and can meet their basic needs all children deserve to live in a home and a culture that welcomes them how about it? all children deserve to have life and not have someone murder them in their womb, in the mother's womb. Every mother deserves the chance to thrive, forcing millions of women to have children they can't support. Who says they can't support them? Or driving them to Gosnell-style back black market clinic. Gosnell style, that is uh, late-term abortion-style black market. Driving, driving them? Who's driving them? they conclude in their own mind that they're driven to that. But that's a very questionable, debatable point. Are they really being driven to Gosnell or late-term abortion-style black market clinics? I mean, again, you know, this is all, all very debatable. Every statement that she's making is so uh, up for debate that it's incredible. And she doesn't even seem to acknowledge that there are uh, arguments against what she's saying at every sentence. She doesn't even acknowledge that. She just goes plowing ahead as if, hey, there's no controversy here. I just made a, a clear factual statement. No, there are very few clear factual statements that she's making, mostly just uh, opinion and conjecture. It says, I believe we have to work together, pro-life and pro-choice, Democrat and Republican, conservative Christian and progressive Christian, to create a culture of life that celebrates families and makes it easier to have 
and raise kids. This is the only way to make our efforts to, rare, to rarefy abortion truly um, sustainable. It sounds like she's running for uh, some public political office. It's so general statement, so uh, politically correct. Who would disagree with that? statement that she just made but it it's it's vacuous it's empty it doesn't have any anything this year i believe hillary clinton has, has better policy proposals to help improve the lives of women children not the children in the womb I, I i don't think she's talking about those because hillary clinton has plans for those children in the womb uh, she wants to remove all restrictions uh to abortion she wants a woman to be able to go in and have an abortion for any reason at all, with no restrictions. So how would Hillary Clinton improve that child's life? Um, it's hard to see how. Uh, in fact, uh, if you, Hillary Clinton would uh, totally destroy that child, that child in the womb, wh whose mother is taking her in or him in for abortion, would destroy that child. So she, th this blogger uh, thinks that Hillary Clinton uh, has better policy proposals to help improve the lives of women, children, and families than Donald Trump, whose pro-life convictions are lukewarm at best. That is true. Uh, Donald Trump's pro-life convictions are lukewarm at best. And that's why I have, in the months, uh, for at least a year or so, questioned his uh, real pro-life conservative uh, credentials. And that's why it's such a a conundrum here we face because we have on the one hand Hillary Clinton who is clearly uh, pro-choice or anti-abortion or uh, pro-abortion and we have Donald Trump who is not clearly anything on abortion uh, who has made some statements and perhaps he's made some promises about uh, electing Supreme Court judges who are pro-life but as far as his own personal convictions, it's really hard to see uh, where he stands on the whole issues. She goes on, whose mass deportation plan would rip hundreds of thousands of families apart, whose contempt for Latinos and Muslims, refugees and people with disabilities would further marginalize the least of these among us, and whose support for torturing and targeting civilians in war call into question whether Christians who support him are truly pro-life or simply anti-abortion. So again, she's extending that definition of pro-life to include uh, all kinds of political issues. It's not just uh, anti-abortion. <laughs> so that th those are my views in summary, but I'd like to unpack them in four main points. So next week I'm going to talk about her four main points, but we're basically getting an idea about where she's coming from she is basically saying that um, she's willing to compromise her conviction, if she really has a conviction, uh, on uh, abortion. Uh, she seems to be saying, yes, I, I'm against abortion. I believe it's uh, against the Bible. But, um, you know, I'm going to vote for Hillary Clinton because here are the reasons. And so she's trying to convince other people to vote for Hillary Clinton uh, rather than somebody like a Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump is not uh, the very best candidate at, at all, and everyone can understand why he's not the very best candidate. Uh, Rachel Held Evans pointed out one of the reasons why he's not a very good candidate, and that is because he is not clearly pro-life. He has said certain things that are pro-life, he has lately tried to defend the Christian uh, position, but is he really pro-life? And if he were to be elected uh, and, and become president, would he actually follow through on what he said he would do? Now, what one of the things that he said he has done is he's made a list of, I believe it's 11 uh, candidates for Supreme Court Justice and he says here are the 11 uh, people that I would choose from and as Christians if we look through them they are mostly in the mold of Scalia he said 
And so if he indeed is willing to follow up and follow through on that promise, then at least we know that he is promising that he will appoint uh, pro-life justices to the Supreme Court. Uh, even though uh, that is not all that we would hope a president would do because, after all, uh, as Rachel Held Evans pointed out, um, even when you have a pro-life president appointing pro, supposedly pro-life justices, you still can't get it uh, overturned. That is, Roe v. Wade overturned automatically because what happens is when these... Uh, People become pro-life or become justices, uh, then they become very nuanced, and then they become very scholarly legally, and they become uh, embroiled in all of these uh, uh, legal disputes on the bench, and some of them come out on the other side of that uh, pretty pro-choice, pretty pro-abortion. Uh, after all. Uh, some of the, the, the people on the Supreme Court that are voting against the pro-life cause, they were appointed initially uh, by pro-life presidents and with the promise, <laughs> with the understanding that they would, uh, that they would uh, in fact uh, uh, vote uh, pro-life, and they didn't. So... So it's, this article totally confuses the issues that are facing Christians this election. And next week, I want to go ahead and look at the four points that she has here. But I just wanted to open up this uh, discussion with her opening paragraphs and then show why Christians need to think a little bit deeper than what this woman is thinking. Well, hope that's been helpful. We'll see you back here next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless.